All right, this is our last uh, talk of Friday before uh, we head off to the last talk of the whole day in the other room. Uh, this is uh, Sam Rustin. His talk is uh, New Year's Resolution, a KiCad project. Uh, Sam is an EE by degree uh, and also in spirit too, I hope. <laughs> I hope I'm an so, EE yeah. too. Yeah, hope hope uh, but across. he's been working with the software for the past four or five years. He's worked in jet engine controls and has been working on autonomous systems for the past couple of years. Outside of a professional context, Sam is a guitar player and a garage tinkerer of amplifiers, radios, and, uh, and various electronics. Please welcome Sam. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so I, I think this is going to be a little bit different. Um, and it <laughs> I have the most differently named presentation, obviously. Um, so the, the motivation for this talk was um, really to get back to doing electronics. Um, I actually, uh, I'd gone to school with uh, one of the guys from DigiKey here uh, 20 years ago. We went to the same, ele uh, same electronics course uh, in North Dakota at a little college there. Um, so after having gone through that, just life happened and I started to do other things. Um, I, had, I had done a couple university courses where I had an electronics or a PCB class. Um, things didn't go as well as they could have. And so I sort of kind of had a diversion and I went a different way and got, ended up getting into software. <laughs> and uh, recently, like I've, I've been listening to like the Amp Hour, um, EEV blog and things like that. And so I was kind of kind of getting excited about electronics again and kind of getting interested in it again. And so um, uh, it, like I wanted to do a project. I just wanted to do something in electronics again. And um, like some of my kind of like amateurly, like professional, I did some software. But then amateurly, I'm like always tinkering with radios and old electronics, um, sort of that you know, armed with a DMM and a soldering iron and just take it apart and, you know, try to f fix things. <laughs> um, and then as a musician, I'm in the garage as well with my guitars and all that stuff. So one of the things that, that while wanting to do an electronics project, um, I wanted to make something that I would want. Um, and so the, the thing that was, I mean, I'm looking at my guitars in the garage and I'm like, okay, guitar pedals. And it's actually something where I left off about 20 years ago with my interest in, in electronics. So I just wanted to show like what a guitar pedal is. Um, you just, it's really something, it's a device that sits in line with your instrument and the, and the power amplifier, the thing that everyone gets to hear that, that generates the sound. Um, and so that usually a guitar pedal can, is a, it's a called a pedal because it's a foot actuated switch that you'll, you'll affect the signal on the fly. So it's like a live, a live effect. Um, so, so it's pretty straightforward, really. It's, this is about as straightforward as, as it can get, at least from my perspective, um, from a circuit, from a, a function point of view. You really just have an input and output, and then s you have a manipulation or amplification of a signal. Um, <clears throat> so um, when Chris announced the, uh, the KaiCon, um, or when he, when he announced that he was gonna be doing KaiCon, um, I, I thought this would be a potential opportunity like to have an external pressure. And one of the reasons I, I needed that external pressure um, to do a project was um, professionally I do software and I don't really have an opportunity to, to in any professional context to, to be around electronics or, or work with that. Um, even though I work closely with some guys who handle uh, PCB creation and firmware and things like that. Um, another reason actually is a more personal reason and it's because uh, I have a couple newborn babies, I have twins and a toddler at home and I have no time. <laughs> so I thought, okay, let me, let me put an added pressure on to this. And, and you know, now that I say that, it doesn't seem like that really added up. <laughs> but I wanted, I wanted to, to shoot for a target and I wanted to build a PCB and I wanted to do it with KiCad or KiCad. And um, I, I, I did that. I mean, I, that's, it was really like, it was something straightforward but it gave me that target to shoot for. Um, so I, I did want to like bring some value to, to um, a KaiCon conference, you know, about KiCad or KiCad. Um, and so I came up with some questions and it's like, how intuitive is the software from someone who, who is aware of like what, what a CAD design software is, does, but then also hasn't really touched it in a long time. 
Um, so like how intuitive is the software? How helpful is the documentation? How helpful is it being open source? You know, like um, some of the free aspects of it. And then like one of the like hidden questions I had was, is KiCad going to be an enabler? Is this going to allow me to like, is this going to spur me on to do more projects? You know, like KiCad itself. And um, I had tried other um, design tools before, don't need to name any of them, but like, um, yeah, they were roadblocks. Like I didn't like them, I didn't work with them. And sort of the, the, sort of the main reason why I chose to use KiCad, and I think this is important too, one, it's free, obviously, and so that's, that's an easy barrier to overcome. Um, but then it's also like the active community support and a lot of the tutorials that existed around it. And it seems like there's been like a lot of energy around KiCad lately. So a uh, quick note, because <clears throat> I do software, I installed it across platforms. And so I had some really interesting kind of uh, notes on the differences between, um, between Linux, OS X, and Windows. Um, <clears throat> I had previously installed uh, three or four version, version three or four. So when I was installing the new, the new uh, 5.0, I ran into all these library issues. And uh, so running through environment variables and uh, Rene Pachel from the forum had really excellent um, um, notes and, 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 and how-tos about how to like solve all that. That said, I still, there was still some barriers to overcome, keeping in mind that I just the minimum amount of time I was able to put into this, I, I really needed it. Like, some, some days, you know, I'd have like an hour <laughs> before I'd get too tired to do anything. And, I, you know, everyone's been up at midnight doing some sort of engineering. But um, this was just constant. So, so the enablement was, was, was really important to me that, that it, the software needs to be intuitive. I need to get over these humps fast and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> the first thing I did was <clears throat> uh, watched a couple tutorials from uh, Chris Gamel and Sean Heimel, which were excellent. They, they were very clear, very, um, very straightforward, and, and showed you how to do something, not just like you could do this or this or this. They actually showed you how to create a PCB. Um, so the first thing was Chris Gamble's like Shine On project, um, which is really just, it's a power and status, GPIO status indica indicator for the Raspberry Pi. Super straightforward. Got the KiCad PCB file, and then I went to Osh Park and I was ready to upload it. I didn't order it because I didn't want it. <laughs> so I thought, well, okay, what do I want? And that's a guitar pedal, right? So yeah, right? <laughs> so the next thing you do is you just go overboard. This isn't even the first one that I picked. Um, I picked a much more complicated delay circuit with some other uh, buffer amplifiers and things like that. Um, it was, I, I overwhelmed myself. Um, so I thought, I actually thought this would be like something good to start with. And so like you see it has power circuit, audio in, audio out. So that's your guitar pedal. But then on the inside you have an input stage, um, <clears throat> a gain stage and a, and a level stage. So this is all based off the same op amp. It's uh, uh, the Texas Instruments uh, 134, 2134, because there's two op amps per, per chip. And I thought, okay, this is simple. It's all the same components, and the rest of it is just jelly bean stuff. And it's like, okay, cool. I can do this. <clears throat> when I got to the component selection, it was just so much that I got overwhelmed in, in just that part at all. Just that part alone. <clears throat> so I thought, you know, I, I like I tried to generate a netlist and that failed, and there were some other issues, and I didn't even know if like some of these electronics would work, and and so um, I tried to do some P spice or, or spice simulation, and that failed. So I was like, all right, I just need to dial it back a bit. And so I <laughs> then I found um, I found this. Oh yeah, a quick point. Um, like I didn't design this. This is um, more or less just copied from a guy. Uh, who posts as Mad Bean Pedals. Um, and this is his quote unquote arsonist circuit. And so like there's some, I made some small modifications, but really nothing. I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do an analysis. I wanted to build a PCB. So I just wanted to go through like the schematic generation and then the PCB generation. And so that still was overwhelming. So I got to this much smaller circuit. Um, this is a really classic circuit, um, Jack Orman. I think designed it, and he probably, I don't know, he, I think he published it in like the late 90s or something. <clears throat> it's, it's like one of the most copied things, and it's really, like a, for DIY circuits and music, it's like one of the first go-to guitar pedals. All it's doing is, is, is using a, um, 
a MOSFET, in this case a BS170 MOSFET, um, as an amplifier <clears throat> and provides a single gain, it's a single gain stage and you have a single uh, gain potentiometer, um, so really straightforward. In fact, I think the only difference between this and that classic circuit is the status LED. I think that's it. Um, so this was a, a much more straightforward thing. It was easy to, easy to wrap my head around everything. Um, my first iteration at, at, at uh, the, the component selection was a lot easier, right? So now we're, I'm dealing with a single MOSFET. I can handle that. And, and, and the other components around that were just the capacitors, resistors. Um, and of course, that potentiometer. Um, this is my first, this is actually the first layout that I actually did. Um, so I put everything on a single layer because more or less I didn't really know what I was doing. And um, it, that's, of course, fine. Of course, it, 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 did, it does work. It did work. Um, but there was a couple of issues um, with this board. I put this slide up in there because once I got to this point, I just wanted to get it made. I wanted to get this thing in my hand because like, it seemed like everything was good. Um, so I hurried up, went to Osh Park, and I uploaded it there, and they had some feedback, and uh, it was all good. I had, like, there was no red flags, nothing. Everything was great. And so I ordered it, and I populated it, and um, I actually, so then I, I wired it straight to the guitar, <laughs> and, and, I, and I, I, I turned, applied power, and um, ran the sound check, and there was nothing. It was dead. And so I thought, well, I ran this thing called DRC, so why am I having an issue? <laughs> this is a real thought that I had. Um, <laughs> so like I said, I uploaded it to Osh Park. All right, running the DRC check, I forgot to put that in there. I uploaded to Osh Park, because they, they give you some feedback about your board. Um, there was no red flags, no errors, and I, of course I thought, that means everything's good. Ordered the boards, received the boards, the sound check failed, and then I noticed that there's this unconnected pad out here. Um, so, like, I, it was just a, a very, like, real moment. I was like, ah, how did this happen? Like, I thought I, I thought I did everything right, and I was just like, I felt like I suckered myself somewhere. And yeah, so when you run a check, when you run a, a anything, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're looking, when you perform an action, and, and then the result is feedback, like, you have to follow through on that. Like, and that, that wasn't clear. I mean, it just, it was like, <laughs> um, yeah, so like, it, you gotta check everything. And I mean, right there, it's like, yeah, there is an, uncon um, you know, an unconnected um, a net. And so, <laughs> I suppose there's no DRC checker checker. So, um, I had only clicked that tab, right? And so then there's, there's the error, right? It tells you exactly where it is, it's wonderful. I really do think, like, that should light up or something, I don't know. Because good God, what if this was a real complex board? What if, you know? <laughs> and I put hours, huh? Overboard. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so the second layout, I, had, I actually then used a, um, I used both sides of the, of the two layer board. <laughs> um, and so in, in addition to connecting the resistor R3 to R4. So now I didn't have to bridge that with my first run. So I still used the first run. That's the one I actually brought with me. Um, and it did work. So once I made that fix, um, I, again, I didn't do any real testing, real proper testing. I just plugged, wired it up to the guitar and hit the, you know, hit the strings and uh, applied power and bam, it was on. And it was so cool. It was so cool to have built something like that. Even though like the process was sort of, you know, there wasn't a lot of design here. It was a lot of just reproducing and going through the motions, but there is a lot of value in that. Um, and I think kind of learning that design iteration process, which is you know, big words for like screwing up and then redoing it and fixing it. A um, couple of things I wanted to note here from like just a beginner's perspective, this was super cool. The, the 3D um, rendering or the 3D uh, viewer, uh, this is exactly what my board looks like. I mean, and I know like you can get more complex things, of course, right? But I was I was kind of floored how like I could ex look I could look at it in a virtual space and see exactly what I would be getting at, um, and I think you know I didn't take very good pictures, but you can you can clearly see it's pretty close you know even from that small picture to what um, to what it was in the uh, sorry 
to what it was in these 3D, uh, 3D images. Um, so my KiCad questions, you know, like how is intuitive is the software? And so as a software engineer, um, I've done things from like controls to, um, to, to data processing, and even to some GUI development, which I shouldn't do, because <laughs> I'm not good at it either, or I'm not, you know, like, that's not my thing, but I've had, I've had access to it. And I was talking with a colleague um, about what intuitive really means, because I've watched people today do live demonstrations, and like, they're able to zoom in and zoom around and pan and do this and all that stuff, and I'm like, oh, wow, I just need to learn this more, and that's what I thought when I was coming up with this presentation, and I was kind of working through these, the, working, working through the project. Um, and of course you can learn anything. You can learn anything. But like, one of the things was how intuitive, what makes sense. And this, this colleague of mine came up with the, well, he told me about the principle of least astonishment. And I guess that's a, that's a real thing that UX and UI designers think about and talk about. And it's really, you want to, you, you want something to behave the way you expect it to. And that, that sounds, there's some nuance in there. So like when you click something, when you point something and click it, you, you want to grab it. I mean, that's even this action, right? I mean, that's, you want to grab something. And I noticed like in EE schema, like you don't do that. You drag, click, and capture, and then, then you can move it around. So like, like what some of these, the earlier circuits that I was doing, like if there was more complexity to them, I, <laughs> I, was, I found that kind of difficult that just that there wasn't that, that natural sort of click and drag. PCB knew there was that click and drag. So again, some of the intuitive things about EE schema, uh, the, menu sim the menu symbols mostly make sense, mostly. There's some reuse of, 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 of symbols. I think that, again, like once you train yourself, then it, it's, you, no, you no longer need intuition. <laughs> but um, they mostly made sense. And the, this bar is at the top of, of uh, of the of the software, and it really flows nicely. Like you just go through each one of those things, like your DRC checker, your, your uh, components, um, the, you know, generate the net list, and then you can move from e schema to the PCB new. So I thought, you know, there was definitely some things that had been they thought about when they were writing the software. Um, so how unintuitive was it? There was like using the pointer, moving around the page, just general pan and zoom, like the clicking of the mouse things. And I know um, other people have pointed some of this stuff out, which, which uh, I've just maybe reinforced my own thinking about it. But software design is hard. UX design, UI design is difficult. And I think, you know, like filing bug reports and filing, uh, you know, a, f making pull requests as a software developer, you know, kind of adding to that I think is, is critical in, in, some, in how something like the software grows and how it, how it becomes, you know, competitive with, with uh, the more professional versions, or you know, people use this professionally, of course, but as it as it grows, so um, you know, PCP new reading the netlist that was kind of a, as expected. Just do it once, because <laughs> if you do it multiple times, it pulls the components in again. Then you're kind of stuck in this kind of mess of having multiple components. Um, so selecting and moving in PCP new, like I mentioned, it was different. You can actually point and click and drag. It was Diff just different, um, and sort of the OpenGL things were really um, like the trace route pushing. I didn't have to do that, obviously, but I played around with that, and and uh, that that just seemed I, I wasn't surprised. It, it it performed as expected. Um, so the other questions that I had was like, how helpful is the documentation? And I was like, eh, I don't know. Like, there there is a lot of good documentation out there. How helpful was it? I didn't read it enough for one. <laughs> But the KiCat info site was great. That is great, and that shows some of the power of that community, and I think that's important because it's open source. And so how helpful is it being open source? Well, the community, that, that's the helpful part. Um, and now the other parts of that are also, they had some st I had some stability issues, like I had mentioned earlier with the OSs. OS X was pretty unstable, actually, pretty much all the time. I experienced some freeze-ups and crashes. Um, Linux, Ubuntu? I actually experienced some crashes and some um, odd behavior. Ubuntu, or I mean uh, Linux Fedora, I think it was uh, uh, perfect. It was completely perfect. Like, I never had any issues with anything. It was also a fresh install of 5.0, so that, that may have sort of um, 
affected that. Windows 10 was just the same way, it was perfect. After fixing the library issue, it was, it was um, completely, uh, completely um, uh, as expected. <laughs> it, it was fine. It, it, so I felt like overall, um, obviously KiCad is something I'm going to be, continue to use. I want to move into some more complex circuits and things like that. So as far as like questions, I don't know if there's too many questions, but like comments, if you see me, if you find me, like if you have any, I'm, I'm definitely open to like feedback or, or to, to some things like maybe you think I should be looking at as a, as a kind of a budding electronics designer again. <laughs> so. I think we should give Sam a hand for having, for 